Hello everyone, my name is Tyler, and this week we will be going over materials and the and how they relate to Unity particles. Um, so for the starting system for today, uh, it's basically just the default particle system. I've just uh, swapped out uh, the default particle material for uh, uh, one that I made. Um, so you can, uh, if you click the little kind of dot button ish looking thing over here. Um, you'll, Unity will give you a list of materials um, in your current project that you can work from. So you can uh, choose one of those or you can create your own by kind of right clicking your explorer, go to create and then material and then you can call it uh, whatever you want and all the stuff is there for you to mess with. So since I've already made one I don't need to do that. So without further ado let's begin. So materials are basically um, a texture and then a shader applied to that texture. Um, you can also tint the tint the material with a different color or a different like opacity, but um, it's basically just a texture and, a, and the shader applied to that texture for your material or for your particle. Um, there's a couple different shaders uh, that you can use. We'll be going over those a little bit later, but first I want to talk about textures. Um, so if you're pretty new. What a texture is, is it's basically just a flat 2D image that um, basically just represents your particles. So if you haven't uh, kind of figured it out already, particles aren't really 3D unless you're using uh, meshes. They're just 2D um, kind of sprites that are always facing the camera unless you choose a different uh, render mode like we went over last week. Um, so uh, let's kind of take a look and see what changing the texture will do to our particle system. So if we select a few different te uh, textures, you can see that a different 2D image is being applied to our particles. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, textures are pretty important in your particles because they kind of, um, you can kind of use the smoke and mirror of like the, the 2D texture to kind of represent different complicated uh, systems like fire or lightning or kind of like basically whatever you want to do because um, the animation helps, um, but it's mostly kind of the texture because that's what you're visually seeing. Um, so let's just stick with the fire one that we had before. Um, and there's a couple of different things you can kind of do to the texture for in Unity. Um, you can kind of have like tiled textures, so if you have like an animated sprite sheet, you can tell Unity that it is an animated sprite sheet by inputting kind of how many um, tile, how many times it's tiled in the x and y direction. Um, so I'll to give you a little bit um, of an idea. So then Unity would basically be able to see, oh, this is how many uh, kind of images are in the actual texture and where we should find each image. So let's reset that back to one. And then you can also, if you kind of messed up in your texture a little bit, or if you want to have an offset for whatever reason, you can do that here. Um, you just uh, have kind of um, it's it's a, it's a z from zero to one range, and then that zero to one range basically represents the entire like x or y um, width or height of the particle texture. So if you do like 0.5, it'll um, kind of shift the texture over by about half the width or half the height, uh, respectively. So you can kind of see what that looks like here. Um, I don't personally use these very much. Oops just because um, I don't really need to. Animated textures, um, I mean, you, you used to be able to, this was, use, you used to use this for particles when you had animated textures, but um, Unity recently, I think within the last year or two, put in this texture sheet animation tab, and that's basically where you want to kind of specify how your textures are going to be um, animated by Unity. So you don't really use this anymore. Um, let's moving on from that, you can kind of change the color of what um, that's kind of applied to your particle as it's being shown. So you can give it um, kind of whatever color you want, but um, do keep in mind that if you're using an additive shader, um, kind of going onto the darker side of the color spectrum, it gets translated as uh, more transparent. So if you do it kind of all the way black, it's completely transparent. And if you do it all the way white, it's completely opaque. So usually you kind of just want to go um, in the middle so, yeah, that's that. Um, so now for shaders, I guess. Um, there's kind of three main shaders that you use in uh, Unity, or at least that I've used. 
um, kind of additive, alpha blended, and multiply. Additive is basically what we've been using the entire time, where um, this uh, kind of darkness factor kind of translates to the transparency of the image, um, and it makes particles become like able to be transparent. So that's pretty uh, handy if you want to do like overlapping particles or fade out, fade in particles. Um, so that's pretty handy. It's usually the one that you use the most, um, but if you want to have kind of darker pro uh, particles, this can be kind of a problem, so then you kind of want to use alpha blended particles, and what alpha blended um, does is it takes the alpha mask of the texture itself and it uses that as like kind of an opacity uh, determinant for your texture, but if your texture doesn't have an alpha, max, uh, or an alpha mask applied to it, um, this happens where it just uses the entire um, image as the uh, kind of transparency uh, transparency mask for the for the particle um, but as you can see here like you can just have completely uh, dark particles without it um, being transparent at all so that's handy um, for when you want to have darker particles you just have to create an actual alpha mask in your um, texture image and I'll be going over that um, probably a little bit into the future because we don't really need to worry about that for right now. Um, going on to the next one is multiply. Um, what this does is it kind of applies the uh, your 2D texture kind of multiple times into a single texture, so there's a lot of like overlap almost. Um, I haven't personally used this one very much, but it can be pretty handy for getting like either really dark effects or really bright effects with the, without using more particles. Um, so it's there if you want to use it. Um, but that's about it for this week. Oh, I guess there's this soft particle um, factor over here if you want to use additive. Um, and basically what that does is it kind of just determines how bright the particle is when they overlap. Um, there isn't like too much of a difference that it makes, but it's there if you want that kind of extra little uh, touch. So it's there if you want it. If not, don't worry about it. But uh, that's about it for materials. Um, it's kind of just a simple little overview of what they do and um, what textures do and what they look like. So hope you enjoyed it. Um, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, thanks for watching.